Hi, this is Johannes again, uh, and I'm here with the Vector grind fixture. Uh, this uh, video is called Vector Up Close. Uh, the other was more of an intro. It'll be called Vector Intro. So uh, if you haven't seen the other one, you should probably see it first, but it doesn't matter. You can see them both. Uh, this one really gets down to the nitty-gritty uh, nuts and bolts of how it works. Uh, I have on my grinder CBN wheels, which I am a dealer for. These are from Austria. Unlike the other ones, uh, these wheels are fantastic. They weigh twice as much as the others. The beauty of these is that they're perfectly balanced when you get them. Uh, they're twice as wide as the typical wheel for a 6-inch grinder. We also have 8-inch wheels. Uh, they're available, uh, and this whole thing works just as well on an 8-inch grinder as it does on a 6. I've had that question a few times, and this certainly is an easy answer. You set up your Wolverine is probably set up already to the instructions five inches from here to the center of the wheel and I do the same thing uh, so there's really nothing to uh, change all you need to do is pull out what you got and put this in there and you're in business you can see there's five a little more than five but that's not all that critical it can be anything like four and three quarter to five and three quarter you just need to adjust in and out to get the angle you want it's all about experimenting and getting what you want out of this thing. It's actually quite flexible. There are a lot of possibilities. Um, we have the multiple pivot points because we're looking to get this kind of grind. This grind has a small rubbing bevel. The small rubbing bevel being key to how, why it's uh, easy to control. And it has a slight curve on the edge, which you do as you grind it. You look for that and create what you want. And then the secondary bevel, you jump up into the next hole. Uh, and then the tertiary little grind off the heel is also a good thing. It makes the tool nicely rounded on the back so it works perfectly without scoring your work. So to get started, you need to put the steel in the tool hole device, which goes in the V-block up against the pin that's there. And... Uh, you slide the steel in, and here's the, the big departure from other jigs, fixtures. I orient my steel flute up by having the V-block index this diamond-wise block and then tightening this while this rests on the shelf of the stop block. And doing it that way makes it possible to grind your entire flute. So this, if you're just sharpening, this is how easy it is. I start here a little past center, wrap around that side. Usually that's all you need. Minimal amount of steel removal makes your steel last longer. So the whole thing actually pays for itself. Secondary bevel, I wrap around and I watch. I look at the, the one that's looking up at me and I see, if, am, I, am I done there? If not, I'll go back to it and go a little more. I'm looking for about a sixteenth or a big sixteenth of rubbing bevel here for five eighth piece of steel. So that works perfectly. And then the tertiary is almost uh, just a little bump like that on the back. You don't want to swing too far. And so that's it, sharpening a piece of steel. I have a piece of half inch here in this tool that I've rough ground on my 36 grit belt grinder over there and I'm going to show you how what my hand knows what to do is also replicated by the fixture. So same deal, the tool hold, steel hold device goes up against that stop pin, steel goes in, up against the stop block, resting on the uh, shelf to index the flute, and then now we're good to go on that. So here you can see I blackened it, so I'm just going to take one light touch and you can see how the, the, the fixture pretty much replicates what my hand knows how to do after 30 something years of doing it. And then you watch the edge develop, it's kind of like wood turning. You look for lumps and bumps and snake bellies and whatever and you get rid of them. And you give it the slight turning on the edge that you're after. And then secondary, and here you look for that rubbing bevel, the first one we ground, to be a consistent width. On a half inch tool I like to make it a little less than a sixteenth. On three eighths, 
steel, I make it only maybe a 30 second log. So I can really pick up tiny, tiny cuts and keep in them without fulcruming myself out with a long heel like is typical on a jig drum tool. You don't want that long heel because it gets in the way. It'll kick you out of your little tiny cuts. I think I've overdone it a little bit here on the front, so I'm gonna, I could even go to the center hole, very lightly just touch that, get the bevel to be the same size, all the way around, and then jump up for the tertiary. And that's it. That's how the grind should look. My light keeps dimming. That's what we want. Tiny little rubbing bevel, secondary, tertiary, excellent grind. Curving sides don't catch. And a big part of what I do is the wheels, of course. The, the, the fact that they're perfectly balanced, smooth, they never change size, so I don't need any kind of a setup block. All I got is a is a red marker mark on my shaft here, and I put it in there because the wheel is always going to be the same size. I'm good to go. And everything you see here, plus all my other products, are available on HannahStool.com. Hope you'll stop in and have a look. Thanks.